and click the notifications button. Hi guys, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids. And this is the first of our fall projects. So I'm glad you're joining me. If it's your very first time, I'm gonna take you through step by step on how to make a really incredible project. And today's is gonna look something like this. Now, anytime you want, you can pause the video if I'm going a little too fast for you or if you just need to take a break to get up and take care of something. But I wanted to show you what you're gonna need to make this project. And today's project, you're gonna need the bag that says A1 Advanced First Project for our Fall Semester Art Box. You might be doing just this one project, but most people are doing all 10. And if you are, we've got all kinds of things in store. We've got drawings, paintings, and sculptures. And they're all, I think, pretty darn cool. So, starting out with this one, this is the floral line drawing inspired by Marimekko. And, or some people call it Marimekko, but Marimekko is what I, I think it's pronounced. And inside you're going to get the instruction sheet in case you wanted to do it again with just instructions and you needed to refer back to it. You get a little image of what uh, we're inspired by and you're also going to get a Sharpie, it's called a fine point Sharpie, and an ultra fine point Sharpie. You're going to get the paper that we're gonna draw on, which is drawing paper with blue taped edges. And the blue taped edges are because at the end, we take the tape off and then it's really clean. It almost looks like a mat. You're going to get a cardboard backing and you're going to get a label. So with all your projects, you get one of these labels and these labels have your name, the date, and what kind of medium you used, all the supplies you used or the main supplies, and who it was inspired by. So that you can refer back to that later if you like. Now there's gonna be a few things that you're gonna need that don't come in this bag. And they were in your welcome bag. That's the bag that has a little bit of everything that you use for several projects. Number one, you're gonna need a pencil. You're gonna need a pencil to write your name on the label. You're going to need a glue stick to glue the label to the back of the cardboard. You're going to need tape and one piece of cellophane that comes out of this roll that you got. The reason that you need this is because we protect all of our art that is on paper through uh, by covering it with cellophane. And then it's ready to hang up if you want and don't want to bother with getting a frame. You're also going to need out of that bag, this is an important supply, the chalk pastels, and you're going to need a blending stick, but that's kind of optional. Depends on how detailed you draw. You, can, you might have gotten a skinny one, which is good, and you might have gotten a fatter one. I, we had them all different sizes between these sizes, so I don't know which one you got, but they all work good. They all have a point, and hopefully you'll keep it pointed. And then uh, let's take a look one more time at our supplies. Once you have all this stuff out, you're ready to go. You wanna be in a space that you can get a little messy. The drawings aren't so messy, but the chalk can get messy. So if you wanna wear your apron, grab your apron, it was in your welcome bag, and put that on. But we're not doing too much chalk, so it might not be. That's all up to you. So once you're ready, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the artist and we're gonna start drawing. So I'm gonna clear my space and set my uh, pastels to the side. I'm going to not need these until after my, draw my ink part of my drawing is complete. And um, to start out, all you're gonna need is the pencil, the glue stick, and the label. Set everything else just off to the side. And we're going to complete our label. So I'm going to write my name and today's date. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and glue it on the edges, maybe a little in the middle. Set it in the middle of our brown cardboard. And now we're done with this. We're actually also done with this pencil because we're gonna go for it with our markers. Okay, so set this aside. You're gonna need your paper. And before I get started, let me show you a little bit about our inspiration. So our inspiration isn't one particular artist. What it is, 
is it is a brand that was very influential in design and in, um, you know, the way that we look at art. So this is what we're going to be making, a pattern. And it's inspired by the company Merimekko. And this company was started by a husband and wife. Um, their names are, ooh, I forgot. Their names are Vilho and Armi Ratia. They are from Finland and they had a fabric company. And the fabric, uh, the idea that Armi, the wife had, was to get her friends who were artists to make graphics that they could print on fabrics. Now this was way back in 1951. So in 1951, the only patterns you found on clothes were usually teeny tiny flowers or stripes or plaid. But there weren't a lot of art on clothes, you know, image, images or stylized art. So she thought it would be kind of cool and she did that and it became very popular. So her company started manufacturing uh, fabrics with that and created a line of dresses that were a big hit. So then they also took the graphics and put it on housewares. Things like sheets and pillows and napkins and plates and to th other things like tote bags and um, maybe vases, all kinds of stuff. So this is one of the designs. Now this is another one I did in one of my other classes where we didn't use black. We used all one color and used a navy blue Sharpie for the whole thing. So you can see what that looked like. And we also, so now this one right here, it's sort of like what we're gonna make today, but you're gonna make it your own, was inspired by this art right here. And this is very similar to this one, except this one has all different colors. And this one is mostly black and white, and it's got flowers in flower pots. And it's very, you know, symmetrical. And then this one, this image here is of somebody in a dress and then these were their most famous flowers for this style of uh, poppy and they called it Unico. And then we have the clothing that made popular were things with just ba really bold, simple stripes and flowers and all these other details. And then these two were also designers. These were the artists who made up a lot of the designs. So what we're going to do right now is we're gonna start drawing. So I've got an overhead camera so you can see up a little closer. And what we're gonna do is draw some flowers. So let's just get to it. So we've got our paper right here. And we've got our inspiration around, right? So what we're going to do is we've got two markers. We've got ultra fine point, and then we've got the fine point, which is your everyday Sharpie, right? Okay, so we're gonna take this everyday Sharpie and we're gonna draw some flowers. We're gonna start anywhere. Um, let's see, let's make a little ring of circles somewhere. I don't know, with like a dozen circles. This is pretty simple. See if you can draw one ring of circles. And remember, you can pause at any time. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating flowers. And some flowers are going to look like they're behind other flowers. And some look like they're in front. And we're gonna have some solid black areas and some thin lines. We're gonna have a variety of different types of lines. Variety? Some are thin and some are thick. So now I've got my ring of, flat, of circles. I'm gonna make a second ring. It looks like a little bracelet of beads. Now I'm gonna go all the way around that and make a second one. While you're waiting for anyone else that's still drawing, go ahead and fill in the center. But rather than just filling it in like this, make sure you get into each one of those little points that's the negative space between each circle. What's the negative space? Negative space. It's the space between the objects that you already drew. The objects that you drew at first are usually the positive space. And the space between them is kind of like background space, negative space. So I've got two rows of circles and that. Now, if I want, I can use my pencil or my eraser as a guideline. So if I want to make, a, if I want to make this simple flower right here, 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my eraser and make a circle of crumbs. Like that, you see that? Then I'm going to put a circle, a, like a, a circle of circles again. It's like a chain of circles or something all the way around and let me show you what's so great about using my eraser as a guideline is that when I'm done I just go like that and I don't have a line to clean up anymore just rub it off so I'm going all the way around with these we are just going to make up many of the flowers we see and while we're doing this let me tell you about these these artists and they came from Finland, a, a city called Helsinki. Okay. Then I rubbed the eraser marks. Looking pretty good. Now I'm going to fill in each of these black this time. So I'm going back in. Because what I'm doing is I'm creating repetition. Repetition! What that? That's when I repeat. I just did something and now I'm gonna do it a whole bunch of times. I'm creating repetition. And mostly with repetition, you're gonna get some patterns. So now we've got a pattern of black circles making a ring. So even though you might have looked at this drawing and thought, wow, I'm gonna draw that, that's pretty complicated. It's really not if you break it down into simple geometric shapes. So far we've only drawn circles. We've just done a lot of them. So go ahead and keep on coloring in. Now you probably think, why are we learning about artists that are kind of commercial artists. Commercial artists? Which is kind of like work for hire. Because they were very influential then. You know, art inspires people in pop culture, all kinds of things. When those dresses came out in the 50s, influential people wore those. And so everyone else heard about it. This company never brought its things to America until the 1960s because we didn't have the internet then. You didn't find out about things until word got around the globe, you know? So anyway, what we're gonna do next is we're going to connect the space between two black circles with a ultra fine Sharpie, skinny line all the way towards the center. So uh, you can go there and you can go there, you can go in here and here, and then you can do all the things in between. And it makes kind of like a starburst, you see? So you keep going around and don't worry about perfection. So it looks like a starburst kind of a flower. Anyway, back to my story. In the 60s, it made its way to America. But for people who traveled all around the world and were in the know of about popular things around the world, they heard about it first and one of them was a man who was running for president, his wife, her name was Jacqueline Kennedy, she was really into fashion and so she wore these dresses in the 50s and then people were wondering what she was wearing because they had really bold prints and they were really fun and bright colors and so she wore those, then her husband became president, then everybody watched everything she wore, right? And it helped in the popularity, kind of like today when People are on a red carpet and those fancy dresses they wear to events, those designers give them to them for free or let them borrow them for free because they want them to get the word out and they know people are looking at celebrities to see what they wear. Same thing. So it's kind of how art influences culture and things like that. This is a design and before that, um, the designs, you know, that were on clothes weren't also on furniture and pillows and plates, but this company kind of influenced that movement in the 1960s. So next we're going to pick out another flower, an easy flower. This one, I want to do this one, which looks like a half circle with a bunch of swirls or spirals that could be like little roses or something. So somewhere out here, I'm going to make a shape 
It goes across and it looks like a bowl. Could be deeper than that or that deep. Then I'm going to the middle and I'm putting a vertical line down it. And now I'm gonna curve all the lines to the right and curve all the lines to the left slightly until they get more, they get a greater curve as they get out farther. Like that. Once I get that, I'm going to make a circle and keep going inside it like that. So I've got a circle. So these are spirals that are right side by side. Spirals! Lots of spirals. So I've got one row of circles. And remember, I'm moving kind of fast because some people out there are gonna wanna go fast. And those that don't wanna go this fast, that's okay, just pause it. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a second row. Remember, you could have made this anywhere. They don't all have to look alike. I'm just gonna teach you some elements, uh, some designs that Miramiko did, the company did. Okay, I've got three rows. I'm gonna do a fourth row. And I stagger them, you see? I don't stack them right on top like an ice cream cone would stack. I put them in between two. I have one resting in between each of the two. Okay, so I've got that going. Wow. So let's make another flower. Okay, let's see. How about, um, Oh my goodness, which one? How about this one somewhere? It can be anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to make a center over here with a circle and then I get those eraser crumbs. With those, I'm going to take my regular Sharpie, my fine Sharpie, and I'm gonna make a circle with a little circle in the center. And I'm gonna fill up this space See where my eraser mark is? I'm gonna fill that in with these. And that's gonna be the center of my flower to start. Okay, now I'm gonna ask myself, is that as big as I want the center of my flower, or do I want it a little bigger? I'm gonna make it a little bit right there. Oh, wow. Now I'm going to make another ring around it. So I'm taking my eraser and I'm going around here, but when I get to the tape, I just cross over it so that it, it keeps going. Now our, my pattern, this is a creation of a pattern that would repeat over and over, like when you print fabric. So mine's gonna go past the edges, but my right and left sides, they're going to have design. I'm try, gonna try not to, what I call, bleed out the right and left side. That means let my thing continue out to the sides, just the top and the bottom for now. So I have this circle right here and I'm going to draw some of these circles on it again, just like I did with the first one. Now you can decide to make these black, like solid, fill them in, or you can leave them hollow, which would be the white of the paper. So then I get rid of all those crumbs Okay, I think I'm gonna make mine dark. Yeah. Now, when you get to the edge of the tape, you can go past the tape. Alrighty. So I've got that ring of black flowers, and you see, I didn't go across here, because really, these would go way out here, but I'm gonna pull that tape off at the end, so it doesn't matter, so I don't need to waste my time drawing on top of that. So next what I'm going to do is use oh, this pen and oh and I'm going to make another circle around it. If that kept going to be maybe right there.
cool. From here, each one of these spaces in between, I'm gonna make one line going out towards the outside edge. Okay, then I'm gonna put that pen down and I'm going to use the ultra fine. And once again, pause it at any time. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make lines with my ultra fine from the center out to the black circles, almost as if this continued, except it's skinnier. And now here we have to guess where it would go. Now these look just like these, but I don't want them to look like those. So I'm gonna put a lot of skinny ones in here and I'm gonna let it like fan out. That means I kind of like spread apart. Okay, I'm looking like that. And now the finishing touch is going to be all these petals right here. Each one looks like a miniature rainbow. So first what I'm going to do is take my regular Sharpie and I'm gonna go like this and make a curve. It's either a U or a rainbow shape. Depends on what direction you're drawing from. This kind of pretends like it continues. There, there. Okay. Within each one of those rainbowy shapes, I'm going to add three more rainbows they're thinner because I'm using the ultra fine point like this. One, two, and three. I'm gonna do that to all of them because I'm repeating. I've got a pattern going. Patterns! Alrighty. So now I've got that flower. Alrighty, but I think I want it to stick out a little more. So I'm gonna make mine different than that. I wish I would have made it a little bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around it like I'm outlining it. And I'm going to do that one more time. Nice! Just like that. Okay, let's do a flower that isn't circular now. Let's do uh, like a half flower. So either at the top or at the bottom, we're gonna add another flower. So I think I'm going to add, ooh, do I see any different ones over on this picture too? Got about the same ones. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a half flower over here that has those little rainbow curved petals. And I'm going to go back in and give, this time I'm gonna give them four. Four little rainbow curves. I love it! All right, so now I've got a half flower off the bottom. I don't wanna do any half flowers off the sides. I'm going to add some lines, maybe starburst. All you see is the bursting part because it continues, but we don't know quite where. And there you go. Okay, there's a couple of really unique shapes. This one right here, which looks like, I don't know, some kind of a plant or a, um, a maze or something. I've got it like this. So I'm gonna pick a spot that I want it in and I'm gonna make a zigzag at the top. So over here I'm gonna go zigzag and down on the sides. Looks like a crown without the bottom line. So go ahead and make a zigzag with two vertical lines on each side. But make sure you have space below it because we're gonna add on. Okay, next we're gonna curve to the side and come down. And on this side, we're gonna curve to the side and come down till we hit something. This one's gonna be one of our trickiest shapes to do, so pay close attention. Okay, next, we're gonna put two lines down the middle. 
And that's going to have a big circle, and as it goes up higher, the circle is going to get a little smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller and smaller. Now we're gonna add a second one, but we're gonna come here, we're gonna slightly go off to the side, and then we're gonna do one more and go off to the side. Do that on the other opposite side because we want it to be symmetrical. Symmetrical is like when things match on each side, but they're kind of opposite. Like you put your hands together, you open it up, they match, except the thumb isn't over here and pinky over here, it's opposite. So this shape is very symmetrical, and we're gonna give it some more circles. So I'm starting at the top. Wherever I had a circle before, I'm going to make one right next to it. But this one goes bigger and bigger and bigger, and you can have one at the bottom if you want. Now you're going to do the same thing on the right. And now we do the same to the one next to it. All right, so now we've got all these hollow circles and we've got all these lines that start straight and then they kind of wave. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look a little like this one. So what we're gonna do is fill in the background space in between all those hollow circles. So this is gonna take some time. So go ahead and get comfortable and fill it in. And even those points on top, darken those too. Okay, you can go ahead and do all those. Or... Okay, I'm halfway there, I'm just about. So I'm gonna keep on coloring in. We go a little bit faster. Alrighty, get into my last section. Yep. Filling it in. It's all worth it in the end. Awesome! Okay, I've got that whole shape done and it's a big, bold shape. So I've got a big, bold shape over here. I'm gonna need one on the other side. I need another shape. So I think I'm going to do one of these things is black and white stripe, but I also like this circle that doesn't have any dots or petals on it. So that one, I think I'm going to put right here. And right in the center, I'm going to draw that with my eraser. And I'm going to put two rows of circles. And one more inside of it. All right, and now I'm just going to take my ultra fine point and put skinny lines in the starburst out of this one. So I divide it into four so that I get it more evenly spaced. And then I starburst it out. Just 
like that. Now I've got two more sections to go. Oops, I wouldn't have lines a little bit there. But I think that that looked pretty good, so go ahead and pause it till you're ready to move on to the next step. And then when you're ready, we're gonna make one of those bold black and white stripe shapes. These kind of look like uh, they're on an angle and like they look like a surfboard to me. So I'm going to put one right, I can practice with an eraser. I think I'll put one right here. And then I'm going to add the stripes to it. And then I'm going to fill in every other section, starting with the middle. Got that one. Let's do one more somewhere. How about we do one over here? So I'm gonna do one that goes like this. I can freehand it because I have a little practice. So I'll do one that way. So I put two in the middle and then divide this in two. Alrighty, so I've got one dark stripe. Now I'm gonna do another one. Now if I wanna clean up the edges at all, I can smooth it out like here. Kind of went out of bounds a little. Okay, so we've got a bold shape, a bold shape, a bold shape. And one thing that I like to do when I'm drawing, I'm so close to it. Sometimes I need to take it this far away and take a look at it. Then I can look at it differently and see which things are bold and stand out. Okay, so now I'm ready for some leaves. I've got a couple of different leaf patterns. I've got this one that goes like this. Well. Let's draw it with the eraser. It goes like fingers. Looks like three little fingers. And on the top of each one it has the circles. So I'm gonna take my regular fine Sharpie. I'm gonna go over my marks. Okay, now at the top of each one, it looks like there are some little berries. So I'm gonna go like this. Let me do the little cactuses, I don't know. <sighs> wow. Now I'm gonna take, and I'm going to use this to give it skinny lines. So once again, here comes another thin, repeated pattern. Sometimes I just move my arm and hold my pen still. So there's one. Let's do a few more. And the last one in this little set. Okay, we've got some spaces left. Now we don't wanna go off the left or right so bad, even though I already did. Shoot, that's all right. So now we're gonna add some leaf patterns. So I see, and these, we've got these little leaf patterns right here. And you can see them on my bigger picture, pretty good, right here and here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some leaves so they're just shaped like little beans or something. I'm gonna pat those all over. And I'm gonna put a line through each one. And now I'm going to take this and I'm gonna go like that. So it's kind of like you angle in on each side, making like a V shape, like that. If you want, you can make some of those look like they go behind this other flower by just going like that and put a line between it. Then I can go back and angle one side and angle the other the opposite side. Just like that. Wow, we've got a lot going on. We only need a few more things. How about one of these areas like this, which is like a circle filled with black circles with a hole in the middle, black little mini donuts. So I'll take a circle and go like this and then put, here, I'll go like that. I'm gonna fill it with these. So I just keep going around and around and leave the center white. Another pattern. If you wanna make up your own flower design that just has circles and lines in it, go right ahead. Maybe I'm gonna combine a couple of their ideas and make one new flower. So they do these poppies a lot, which has got a wavy petal. Maybe I'm gonna do one, maybe I'm gonna do some of those. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna wiggle, and I'm gonna have a circle and a circle. That's kinda like that one right there. And I'm gonna make the circle in the center dark, and the outside of it dark. This is me creating my own kind of Miramico st style. I'm gonna try not to go off the side so much. Woo, that one didn't come out so smooth. But that's okay. They're hand done, we're not doing it like a machine. Then I'm gonna do another flower right here. But the center would be in here somewhere. Wow, I think I'll do another one of those. Hmm, what am I gonna do with those? Let's see. Oh, they also have just some black and white striped areas. I like that, you see it over here? So I'm gonna do that over here. I'm gonna go wavy, wavy, and double it. And leave a space and go wavy, wavy, double it. Leave a little space. So you're making up your own with the inspiration of their designs. Kind of like that. Ooh, here's a little space in here. Maybe I'm gonna make some black double curves, double thick curves in here. Just fill in that space. And maybe I'll also do it here. As like a little smile curve. These are good for filling in your background. The background is that space between the main objects. And I think to finish it off, I'll do some of that over here too.
like that. Let's make sure they're thick enough. Okay, another design they do. Is, wow, I think I've got a lot going on. So I've got this much going on. I think I've got it filled a lot. So next I'm going to color in not everything, just select things. Maybe half of the things I'll color in. And I'm not gonna use too many colors. You can go with, this was all like blues and greens. You can go with a color scheme or this one was pink, red, blue, and yellow. You know, you can decide. So I'm gonna look at my chalk, I'm gonna pull it out. You might need to unwrap each one of the plastics. And you, I'm gonna decide what colors do I love out of these colors. Okay, I love, I love this color. And I love orange. So I'm gonna add oranges in mine. Orange, red, don't do more than four colors. Orange, red, blue, and green, blue, and maybe this. No, maybe this. Yeah, those are gonna be my colors, okay? Pick whatever colors you want, but, but limit it to about four. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do this whole flower green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the chalk and I'm gonna color it in. I'm not gonna color on top of the black. I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm gonna go like this. Go around here. And now I gotta stay inside my shape. Okay, you don't want to build up a ton of chalk dust and you don't want to blow the chalk because then it goes up, sometimes it lands in people's eyes or makes them sneeze. So once, I don't have that filled in perfect, but what I do have is I've got it filled in good enough. See, I used this before and it got red on it, but it's pretty clean. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill it in between the black so I'm not covering the black so much. Or you can go ahead and smear on top of the whole thing with your finger. And then you can just tap out your chalk dust. And if you want the blacks to seem blacker, take your pencil eraser and erase it if any chalk got on top of your bright blacks. But don't worry about the skinny lines. Only the big spots. There you go. That's one down. Let's color at least four more shapes, okay? So I'm going to take this, I'm gonna leave all my black and white stripes and dot things that color. I'm just gonna color in my flowers. So this one, I'm gonna go with the red. So now I'm gonna fill it in with my finger, rubbing it in. That one doesn't have any tight little corners. But I kind of went out of bounds a little here, so maybe I want to take my eraser and erase it. And right here. And then I'm going to tap out my chalk dust. Wow, that's looking pretty good. If I want it brighter, maybe I want these things brighter. So I'm giving them a second coat. And I'm not going to rub those out. I'm just going to leave those like that. And I'm going to tap it out and maybe take my eraser to the center to make that black seem blacker. So now I've got two shapes. See how quick and easy it is to color with this chalk? But don't smear it, okay? Now let's go with another color. Let's go with this orange color. And I'm going to make uh, this orange in here. So I don't need to waste my time on the black part. And I think I'm gonna leave those little circles white to mix it up. So I get my finger and I blend it in, or I could use this blending stick and just get in between these shapes. Now I'm chapping out my chalk dust, and I'm getting my eraser and I'm cleaning up. Now watch where you put your hand. You don't wanna put it on top of something that you just colored with chalk. So this, I'm cleaning up all of these.
All right, just like that. Oh, but now I've got the center. If my eraser gets dirty with chalk, I just rub it out. So now I'm gonna lighten these ones up. They got a little chalk on them. That's clean, but if I wanna even clean these up more, I'm gonna go with this chalk, this blending stick, and get into these little teeny spots. And that one's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to use this color, and I think I'm going to do this shape, right? These shapes. And I'm also gonna do these little circles. And I'm gonna take my finger and get the big spots. But these small spots, I need a blending stick. Go orange on that. That's right. Okay. A little more right there. and tap that out. Okay, so blue, or no, green, I'll use this and this. I think I'll do this other flower here, the light green, so it kind of looks like it's part of that kind of flower. Rub that out, tap it. That one, I'll see if there's anything I can clean up around the edges. Okay, and lastly, I'm gonna do that little, kind of like bowl of roses or whatever it is. And I'm gonna fill that in. Okay, I've got that. Rub it with my finger a little. Keep in my area. Okay, tap it, bam, bam. Okay, clean it up. And there we are. I think it's done. I think I'm gonna hide my signature in it somewhere. Maybe right here. somewhere tiny. Okay, I think mine's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna teach you how to mount it. But before you mount it, wipe off your hands on your tablecloth or on your apron, put away your chalks. Let's see, I've got green and blue. I'm gonna move my chalks out of the way. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my art. So let me spread things out a little more and show you how to do that. So first decide which side's gonna be up. Up, I think is gonna be here. So I'm going to take my board, and you have a choice. You can either make tape loops for each corner or you can take a little glue stick. And I'll use a glue stick so I can go nice and fast for you. So I don't need a lot of glue because I'm gonna have cellophane wrapped around it to hold it together. So I put this right here for now. And it'll stick slightly. Now watch when how clean your fingers are. You don't want your fingers to get on this white space. And if you're pretty young and you want some parents' help for this, then go ahead and ask somebody to help you. But I think you can do it on your own. So you're gonna uh, rest your arm on it and you're gonna peel this tape slowly and away to the side. You're not gonna go down this way because if it starts to rip the paper, it might go into your drawing. So I pull it really slow and evenly pulling. Oop, now that one's on top of it, so let me pull this one out of the way. And I'll pull this. You can also use these to make tape loops, like just going like that and making a few tape loops. I do that a lot too, because why not reuse this tape? Okay, so then I'm turning it, whoops, 
And now I'm going to pull this in and make sure my hands are still really clean, hopefully really clean, and pull this. Okay, let's see. You can we hold it? Try to rest your hand on a place that doesn't have chalk, if you can. Some eraser crumbs. Okay, you want to keep it clean, right? Okay, so now we're getting this one off. Oop, that one, see it pulled a little of the paper off, but you can't really tell from here. As long as it doesn't go into your drawing. So slow it down if that happens and pull it out to the side and maybe it'll stop peeling off your paper like I just did. Okay, and last side. Okay, we've got all four sides of the tape off. And I've got it just like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get out my cellophane. So I've got this roll of cellophane. You only need one piece. So, so now I've got this piece right here on my table. And I'm gonna take my art and I'm gonna flip it over. And once I flip it over, I'm going to leave it in place. Now double check and see if there's anything you wanna rub out. Is everything looking good? So I'm gonna flip it over, lay it down, and leave it in place. Get my tape, pull off a couple pieces so you're ready to go. And go to the long side and pull it across and put a piece, one or two pieces of tape. Let's see if I can get that one on this guy. One piece of tape here and one piece of tape here. And then I'm gonna get another piece or two and I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can and tape it down. Okay, now I've got these edges. You're gonna wrap it like a gift. So go ahead and get one or two pieces of tape ready. And then I fold in the corners and then I flip it up. And I secure one corner down and I go to the other corner. I just don't wanna see the cellophane from the front on the corners, do I? Now you can add another piece and remember, some people have a hard time ripping this tape. Instead of going down like this, whip it, and then it comes right off. Okay, last side. And voila, here's my project, just like this. Wow, I can't wait to see yours. Now, once you get yours done, if you want to share it with me, you know, take a photo and tag it with art classes for kids and post it on Instagram and I'll see it. And you'll also kind of be sharing it with the world. Now, if you don't want to put it out in public, but you still want to share it with me, you can send it to me by email. Send it to Kim at artclassesforkids.com. I love to see how the students' work comes out and I'd love to see how they interpreted the inspiration of the artist or the art style that we were learning about. And I hope you enjoyed learning all about Marimako and uh, doodle these flowers whenever you just have a marker and you wanna write something on paper. Now you know how to make all these really cool flowers. So I hope you enjoyed this project and if you did, you know, um, send me a comment. Send me any kind of, uh, you know, anything you want to tell me about how you felt about this project. And uh, until I see you next, hey, keep making cool art. <laughs>